How's it going, guys? It's Al. It is Friday of week five of NFL, and we are preparing to build some lineups on DraftKings. I'm going to take questions from my Twitch chat for the next hour, and we're going to go over all the different permutations, all the different lineup questions, the 2v2s, the 1v1s, the 3v3s, go over some strategy, maybe some game selection, some bankroll management, whatever we're, they, whatever they want to ask, I'm here to answer. So hopefully this helps you guys. And if they do, if my videos have helped you on the showdowns or with my lineup reviews or the, the first look lineups or anything, please let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you click like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and definitely click that notifications bell so that you can be notified every time that I post a new video right here on YouTube. So let's get to the chat, see what questions they have. There was one right before we went live. First of all, Legend of One Foot, thank you for the 500 bits, says have some bits. Thank you. I will appreciate those bits. Uh, the question was, can you fit three big running backs and Juju in a lineup? So why don't we just kind of take a look, right? Let's, let's go to DraftKings and let's take a quick look uh, at what we can fit. So three big running backs. Are you, do you guys want me to include Gurley in this or not? So like, let's... I'm going to skip Gurley because he's super expensive. Go with Gordon, go with McCaffrey, uh, and go with Connor, right? So those are three of the top five or six running backs people are considering this week. B-Bonds MVP, thank you for the three months. Unlocking the silver VIP badge in the chat. No Gurley chats, that's good. So that makes my life easier. And you want a Juju. So you want a Juju. That gives us 3.6K. So we got to get a, a cheap D, right? So like somewhere in this range probably. Ravens 28. Jets 26, Browns 25. Okay, they're cheapest, so let's go with them. I think we're going to – I don't know that we can afford up to here at tight end. Right? So I don't know that we can do that. So we got to come down to the cheaper tight ends and really kind of roll the dice a little bit, right? Somebody like Uzoma uh, against Miami I think would be at least okay. Goddard against Minnesota, but not loving that pick. You know, like uh, we said that his – Snaps and his targets and routes run were going to go down once Alshon Jeffrey came back. That definitely, definitely happened. Chat's screaming for Vanit. You go with Lacoste, too. Howie, how high? Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime. So we need a cheap one. Let's just go with 2,900, right? Just to, for, for speed's sake, so I can get to a bunch of other questions. Now we need cheap wide receivers. Okay, so what's his name? Valdez Scantling? For Green Bay, you're going to need to roster him if you want this one. Probably going to need Taiwan Taylor uh, if you want to go with that. And that leaves you 5,700, so you could probably fit. Uh, there's a lot of quarterbacks in that range you could go with, right? So, like, you start with Stafford. You go Bortles if there's not too much rain. Definitely watch the forecast there. You can go Russ Wilson for 5,100. Uh, there, there's options. So, yeah, theoretically, you could do that. You know, it's, it's definitely possible. It leaves you stretched, maybe a little more stretched than I'd like to be, but you can do it. Thielen and DK Cash, if you come down off one of the high-priced running backs, yeah, I love Thielen. Leading the league in targets, uh, they're going to throw the ball 60 times, probably 50, 60 times this week, especially if Cook is out. They're not just going to be able to pound the rock uh, all day long. They're one of the worst rushing teams in the league, and they're playing against a team that allows some of the least rushing yards per game. You could do Mixon, D. Johnson. Yeah, if you want to go with one of the cheaper running backs, especially with Geo uh, out this week, Mixon going to get all the, the workload coming off of an injury. If you think that that's going to be the route that they take, go with him. Stafford or Bortles in cash. If no weather, I like Bortles. If there is weather, I probably would prefer to pivot up to Stafford or down to Russ Wilson. Is Russ Wilson still cash game viable? You want to take a look? I mean, this, he's scarier than he used to be. Here's, here's the thing. They have a terrible offensive line. He's thrown for multiple touchdowns in three of the four games, and he hasn't cracked 22 fantasy points. He's getting hit. He's getting sacked like six times a game, you know, four, six times a game, every single game. Uh, I think the Rams are definitely going to get pressure on him. They're definitely going to get to him. They're vulnerable on the outside. They're not letting him throw the ball a ton, and that's limiting his yardage upside. He ain't running, right? He, he has kind of pared back the running uh, in the last couple of years, and very much so this year. He used to be a 330-yard, even last year, 330-yard multiple touchdown guy. Still looks like the multiple touchdown guy, and I think he still uh, is going to continue that, getting Baldwin back. But the yardage isn't there. The attempts aren't there. If they're ever going to be there, it's going to be this week against the Rams where they're going to have to score. Uh, the Rams are going to score 30 pretty much all the time, 
right? Expect 27 plus from Rams. So you've got to score 30 in order to beat them. You're not going to do that with the game plans that the, the Seahawks have had. So I think they have to throw the ball more this year or this week uh, to win. So uh, Russ at 5,100 is, to me, a solid play. Last man 77. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Guys, the Discord link is incorrect. If one of the mods can go grab one of the links and put a correct link in there, just put it in chat and people can join. Thornton Melon! Hey, you're a melon. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Sanu or Taiwan Taylor DK Cash? I'm I'm firmly on Team Taiwan there. Uh, Sanu does not have the upside that Taiwan Taylor has. They'll both see similar amounts of targets. Uh, both going to be uh, heavily utilized for the price tag. I mean, they're not going to be 12 target guys at 4K, but like they're going to be six, seven, eight, nine target guys at that price range. And Taylor has the ability to take the roof off of defense, both with a deep ball or we've seen him take multiple screen passes 30 yards. Packers running back thoughts. Uh, probably Aaron Jones. Vanit and Cash. Mm, uh, pro I'm not probably comfortable with that. Is Yeldon scary to me considering what happened with Corey Grant in week two? Yeah, Yeldon's always scary to me. I, I am not a Yeldon supporter. I understand that he is a value this week. I will have percentage of him in my tournament lineups, but I don't know that he is uh, a super stud. Best defense for cash? I don't know. Tennessee, maybe, going up against Buffalo? Like, honestly, I think there are multiple defenses at multiple different price points, and none of them really... There's no clear-cut defense this week that I am just slamming into lineups i like the browns i like the jets if you're going cheap i think the ravens has been a good defense and playing against a rookie quarterback honestly attack the rookie quarterbacks you know you want pressure on the quarterback and you want the ability for turnovers uh, that's what i'm looking for in a defense and that's what i'm looking for with the offense that they're playing against and if you can afford the rams going up against seattle in seattle with the amount of pressure that seattle's allowing on their passer go for it uh, Connor Baldwin, Taiwan, or Yeldon, Juju, and Scantling for cash. I'm waiting on Scantling until I find out everything about Green Bay. And I may have missed something just before we went live. Like, I think chat said Cobb is out. I haven't gotten, I haven't seen confirmation on that. Chat, can you let me know if Cobb is 100% out or not? We also have Devontae Adams, who's been struggling this week and in rehab, uh, working with the rehab team in practice. I assume he's going to play. Thoughts on Rosen going against the Niners? Uh, I, yeah, if this is, if there is a week that Rosen is going to have a very good game, it would be this week going against San Francisco, who has given up so many receiving yards to running backs this year and last year and having one of the best pass catching backs in the league in David freaking Johnson. But can they get him the ball? Will they scheme to get him the ball? Will they move him around the field to allow him the easiest, you know, Cobb out for sure. Thank you. Perfect. I didn't know if it was confirmed yet. Um, so, yeah, I think that this is a good game other than the fact that they play super slow. That's my issue with, uh, with, with Arizona. If you can get to one of them, one of the three, do I prefer Thielen, Diggs, or Juju and Cash? I think Juju's first and then either one of the, uh, either one of the Minnesota wide receivers. Is using Shepard chasing? Yeah, it is. I like Shepard. I just don't love Shepard. Using Shepard last week, he was a slam dunk because he was facing off against New Orleans, and New Orleans is just hemorrhaging points to wide receiver twos and slot receivers, and Ingram was out at the same time. Him getting 8 to 12 targets against a three-legged wildebeest was the surest thing that you were going to get, and he was 4,900. Connor or Mixon straight up? I'm always going to prefer Connor. I, I don't know what my mental block is with Mixon. I want to believe in the kid's talent. I know what the measurables are. I know what the comps were coming out of college, all those sorts of things. I just haven't really seen it from him on a consistent enough basis. And I haven't seen the team willing to just feed him the ball consistently enough to want to, to slam him in over Connor against Atlanta, who's got everybody in the interior. Their, their interior of the defense was the softest that they've had. And then all their starters got injured. And we've seen what opposing running backs have done to them through the air, giving Connor a really, really, really high floor in the highest ceiling game of the day where the Steelers should have a lot of red zone opportunities. If there is a pass interference in the, in the end zone, he's going to get the one-yard plunge. Like, there's a lot of touchdown equity. There's a lot of target and catch equity. There's a lot of yardage equity in James Connor at only 7,500. Ben and Cash, you compare him with Connor for all the Steelers TDs. 
little expensive for me. I know that the spread isn't as wide as you'd like it to be, but like those, if you come down to the 5,000 range, that's $900. $900 goes a long way in this week's uh, daily fantasy roster building. There are only 400 spots left in the listener league. Good Lord, they're going to have to bump it again. It's only Friday. And they bumped it up to 5,000 people, and there's only 400 spots left. That's outstanding. The Edge listeners are doing, uh, doing, the, doing the Lord's work. Thank you, guys. Always bet against Hugh and play the opposing defense. <laughs> it's worked. for the, I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I'm not saying that it's going to work in the future, but that's worked for about two years. John Brown turning. Definitely fine with that. Definitely fine with that. Favorite wide receivers in the 4 to 5K range. If you go read Best Buys on ESPN, you will find all those guys, but let's take a look at them. I, I mentioned a lot of them in detail. I like Baldwin. think he's cash game uh, viable. I think that Keelan Cole, again, I'm going to give my analysis on this Jacksonville-Kansas City game, assuming that there is no weather. If there is massive weather on Sunday morning and you want to avoid the game, then do so. You know, work that into your own thing. But I'm not a weatherman. We're 48 hours before kickoff, so, like, I can't make that decision now of what I'm going to do Sunday morning. Wait until Sunday morning for the anti-Tinkercast right here on Twitch. Uh, I go live 45 minutes before lock, and then you guys can kind of check it out. Keelan Cole right now for me is, is GPP viable, but not cash game viable. Sammy Watkins, no thank you. D.D. Westbrook, same as Keelan Cole. Marvin Jones Jr., cash game viable. Tyler Lockett, flyer. You know, like GPP dart throw, sprinkle maybe, but not like a, a GPP core play for me. I like Jordy Nelson. I like the role that he's been in. I like the soft matchup he's got on the outside and how well uh, the Chargers defense has done with Amari Cooper the past couple of years, uh, meaning that Nelson could get some more uh, looks as well. Callaway, nothing more than a dart throw this week for me. Uh, Mike Williams, if Benjamin is out, I do like Williams. Moncrief, nothing more than a sprinkle. Taiwan Taylor, uh, I like a lot. Sanu, I like less than Taiwan Taylor. So like I said, there's a lot of dudes in that 4 to 5K range. Galladay good for cash. Mm, I think he's priced in a weird spot. Cup and cash. Everybody wants to play all these expensive wide receivers in cash. What running backs are y'all playing? Okay, one, what running backs are you guys playing in cash to be able to afford these really expensive wide receivers? And B, which running backs are you not playing in cash and taking on that opportunity cost to fade Christian McCaffrey and Melvin Gordon and uh, and James Conner and Todd Gurley. Which one of those guys are you not playing? They're playing Ty Montgomery. Yeah. 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 Mixon and Yeldon? That scares the bejesus out of me in cash. I don't know if I can go into a head-to-head -head this weekend and say, yep, I'm going to play a $500 or a $1,000 head-to-head against somebody, and I've got Yeldon and Mixon. Let's go. I would rather be the guy with at least two of that four-man group between McCaffrey, Gordon, Connor, and Gurley. I'd rather have two of that four. And let my opponent figure out where they're going to... Because if you've only got one of those four, you got to figure out where you're going to make up those points. Any running backs under 5K that are worth playing in cash at flex? Uh, if you believe that the Lions will give him more of the carries, then I think on Johnson is a solid play. 6.1 yards per carry. 6.3 yards per carry. 5.4 yards per carry. Getting some work at least, even though he did not against Dallas, in the passing game. The first 100-yard rushing game that the Lions have seen. Got 16 carries in that game in a blowout win. Did they just force-feed him the ball there because of that? Why did he not get 10 carries in any of the other three games that they've had when he's clearly their most dynamic back? Uh, with the venerable one, LeGarrette Blunt, Averaging... 2.7 yards per carry. If he can get that up to 2.9, 2 then we could put a decimal point right in the middle of his uniform and he could just wear his yards per carry out on the field. That would be awesome. But, I mean, if it's me, I'm playing the guy that's got 
a five to six yard per carry average over the guy with the under three yard carry average. But that's just me. Pricing difference between car and Bortles, uh, it's 300. Like, are you asking what it is? It's 300. One's 55, one's 52. Car is somebody else. He's another guy that I just I don't like to play in cash. I want at least some running upside with my quarterbacks. Or I want them to throw the ball 60 times. I see R. Henderson saying that 30 targets spread across your three wide receivers. Yeah, that's I go I try to get that. I want to try and get more. I want to see if I can bank on getting 30 plus targets. If I get 30 targets from my wide receivers and 70 touches total out of three running backs from two running backs and a flex in cash, I kind of feel like I'm going to win. You know, you can expand that out to your tight end and say maybe 36 targets, right? If you get 36 targets from your three wide receivers and tight end, you get 70 touches from your two running backs and a flex. I think you're going to win more cash games than you lose. I just do. You're not going to win all of them. And there's going to be weeks that it doesn't quite work out that way. But over the longer sample size, over the course of a season, if those are your goals to reach, then you win. This song is awful. Yeah, but it doesn't get my YouTube videos demonetized. So it is what it is. Wish you could watch the podcast. These are, these are real issues. And I am with you on Team Post the Damn Video. Marvin Jones in cash this week. Definitely think he's cash game viable this week. T leads the league with end zone targets. Not red zone targets. End zone targets. Ones that if he just catches it, he gets seven more fantasy points minimum. Could be 7.1. Could be, could be nine. Yeah, Jerry went bonkers. I can't believe Luke left in me doing hold music either. 70 touches out of your running back? That seems pretty high. I mean, yeah, it is. You know, I want three running backs to get 20 plus touches and at least two that are going to get me 25. You know, take a look. What running backs do you think can get you 25 touches this week? Is Todd Gurley going to get you 25 touches? Maybe. Looks like he will, right? Is Melvin Gordon going to get you 25 touches? Add what here? 22 here, 17 here, 15 here, 24 here. Probably north of 20. Christian McCaffrey, 30 touches. Uh, this game he had 22 touches. This game 16 touches. Coming off of a bye week. Uh, Saquon Barkley. This week 16. This week 22, 25, 20. Do I always get to 70? No. But do I want guys that realistically have a chance at getting me 25 touches at running back. Yeah, most definitely. What wide receiver is the most underpriced on FD? I have no idea. Jones and Brown in cash. Antonio and Julio? I'm. That's going to be a no for me, dog. I'm probably not going that route. Does CMC look like Bales? No. So I feel Stafford's ceiling is high enough for cash versus Cousins or Cam. I do. Okay, put it this way. If I have a lineup and I want to get Cousins in a lineup and I'm like, you know what? I've got 58 or 5,900. I'm going to be okay with going with Stafford in that lineup. Is Sanu cash game viable? I know people. Why, why is everybody on Sanu in the chat today? Y'all loves. You just are loving you some Sanu today. I, I like Sanu. I don't... I don't get it. He's all right. Can Levitan catch football? Yes. Wilson and Baldwin Stack is going to win the Millie Maker this week. It might, and it's only 10-1. So it allows you to do basically everything else. <laughs> That's going to be a Sano from me, dog. He had a big game last week, so is it just like whack-a-mole? Like, are we just are we just saying he had a big game last week, so let's play him now? I understand that it's a you know it's a really good scoring environment. Julio's gonna score at some point, right? He's gonna get himself into the box at some point. 
Freeman's back this week. That's another guy to, to eat up some red zone usage. Coleman's still going to get run. Ito Smith's still going to get run. They utilize Hooper at least in the red zone. I mean, anybody in that game can catch two touchdowns, I guess. You know, it's going to be a really... It, it could be a game that's 35 to 28 or 35 to 31 or something ridiculous. So, like, there's a lot of touchdowns to go around. Cup too cheap? I mean, kind of always for me. No, I'm not calling it. Cup, I like Cup in the 5K range. He's up to 6,300. I'm never going to say don't play Cup. I just don't know that I'm going to pay 6K for wide receivers this week. Outside of tournaments. Tournaments, I'm fine with doing anything you want. Uh, and give yourselves a floor for a percentage owned of a player and make sure that you have some exposure to the guys that you want. Boyd for cash. Uh, I like it. I love the, the, uh, I love the targets that he's getting. You know, you guys know me. I want usage. And he's getting them. And they're easily convertible catches too. And he's never going to be double teamed because it always has to roll over to AJ Green. And he plays a slot, which is impossible to double anyway. He could theoretically see more looks on the inside of the field or in the interior because of Eifert being gone. I think they're going to move Mixon outside some, just like they did in preseason, just to get him in space. McDonald to Mustin Cash? I really like McDonald. I think he's not a must, but I think he will be the most popular player in Cash uh, at tight end because of everything else that he opens up for you. You know? I think he's in a really good game environment, playing at home in a high-volume, high-efficiency pass offense, getting at least a lot, you know, getting a good amount of looks, getting red zone looks, scoring touchdowns uh, in a game where his, his team is expected to score 30. Juju versus Connor in the flex for DK Cash. Uh, I would go with Connor, but I understand people want to go with Juju. For Cash, I'm usually going to go with the running back on DK. There's just more touchdown equity. Especially if it's a running back that can catch passes within that offense. And Connor has shown that with Le'Veon Bell out, is he Le'Veon Bell? No. But in the last four weeks, he's gotten seven, six, five, six targets a game. And now he's playing a team where they're going to put, he'll probably get six to nine targets. He'll be a, if you're setting six as the over under, I'll take over in terms of targets against a team that lets you catch the ball with your running backs and they try to tackle and now they simply can't tackle because everybody's hurt. Boyd over Baldwin in cash. I prefer Baldwin. I'll take the savings. Henry or Lewis? Punt. Probably not going to play either of those guys. I know it's a great matchup. But I'd go, I think I'd go Lewis if I took one or the other. And Joku cash viable? Uh, eh, you can, if you need the extra money, you can. You know he's going to get seven targets. He pretty much gets seven targets every week and plays 90% of the snaps now. 80 to 90. Odell and Devontae Adams in GPP. Uh, I'm waiting on Devontae for health reasons. I'm always fine with Odell in the GPP. Do I think Le'Veon Bell is going to Philly? I have no idea. Hooper and Joku in cash. I definitely prefer Joku to Hooper for if you're going with a, a cheap wide receiver in cash. Marvin Jones or Baldwin in cash. Why not have both? I think they're both cash game viable. Ricky Seals Jones, cash viable? Not for me. What's your favorite GPP stack this week? I don't know. I want to answer your questions, guys, about your lineups. I don't want to, you know, not questions about my lineups. You give me your questions and I'll answer them. You know, I want to help you out. I'm not here to just give you all of my stuff. I will give you the most honest answers I can with your stuff. Who the hell is Swope? Backup tight end who scored all the touchdowns the other night. It's funny because early in the season, everybody's like, oh, Doyle's getting vultured. By Ebron. Now, oh, Doyle's out. So we're going to play Ebron. Yeah, let's go. There's nobody to vulture. Swope just vultured all the touchdowns last night if you played Thursday. Matt Ryan and Crash. Cash. Crazy? No, it's not crazy. It's expensive, but it's not crazy. Okay with Jordy and Cash, assuming uh, Cooper gets shadow treatment. I mean, I like Jordy this week. I think that he's behind about five other wide receivers in that price range for Cash. In that same price range. Breeder, Galladay, and Flex. Give me Galladay with Alf coming back. 
cup in cash or downgrade to Marvin and add high end running back. I always want the high. I will always want the high end, high volume running back. Five to six K running back for cash on DK. Let's take a look. Five to six K. Okay, that's the range you want. So at six K. Kareem Hunt in cash against Jacksonville. I'm going to pass. Matt Breida, pass. TJ Yeldon, I think he's cash viable. I guess we'll have to get a Friday practice report. Limited practice Wednesday doesn't mean much to me. I, I don't pay attention to Wednesday practice reports other than to just kind of perk my ear up a little bit and, keep, and take note. Because like a lot of guys get Wednesday off. So uh, Yeldon, I think, is viable just because they're going to have to throw a lot. They're going to have to keep up. They're going to have to score. Uh, no four net means increased snaps. Uh, Deion Lewis, uh, I don't feel comfortable playing him in cash. There's no touches, man. There's just no touches. Carlos Hyde, you know, will get the touches, but it's against a really tough, uh, or against a really tough opponent, and has not been utilized at all in the past game. Jay Ajayi getting, you know, half the work. At least he's getting the goal line work. Lashawn McCoy, no. You know, it's just it's it's a barren wasteland in there. CGV, thank you for the 200 bits. Six Sniper says, if I was picking a group for GP, would I go Freeman over Coleman and just avoid both? Uh, I'm kind of in wait and see mode on that. AJ Green, strictly a tournament player, cash game viable. I mean, I think he's cash game viable. I don't think that. Uh, to me, it comes down to who do you want to play. You know, if you're if you're making a cash game lineup, are you going to play? Phelan, Connor, Juju Smith-Schuster, or A.J. Green? You know? And what order are you going to prioritize those guys in cash? Or Barkley? In what order are you going to uh, prioritize those guys for your cash game lineups? You can even include Steph Diggs in that. And I think A.J. Green comes up near the bottom of that, you know, allocation in terms of prioritizing who you're going to put in your cash game first out of that group in that price range. So I think he is a great player who is a cash game viable player, but based on the way that the other salaries are on the week, I don't know that he is going to be owned at all in cash games, not even 1% in the high stakes double ups and 50 fifties or high stakes head to heads, but I want to overweight the field in tournaments. And that's how making tournament lineups and cash game lineups differs for me. Right? I will take a stand on a player that I think is a good play if roster construction is leading everybody else in a different route. right? And if you love A.J. Green this week and you say, well, nobody's talking about this is the common, right? Like, nobody's talking about A.J. Green. Why is nobody talking about A.J. Green? Who cares? Just play him. Overweight the field. Greek Freak 94 thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. J Vogue 850, thank you for the 200 bits. Thielen and Taiwan Taylor, or Diggs and Didi. Give me Thielen and Taiwan Taylor. I like Taylor more than Didi. Like Zach Ertz, exactly. Double digit targets in every game this year. Nobody's going to play him in cash because you can't fit him. But like, how much own do you think he's going to be in tournaments? 10%. What if you take a 20 or 25% position in your cash game or in your tournament lineups? You make 10 lineups, you make two or three that have Ertz. You have 20 or 30% exposure to Zach Ertz. The field has 10. So you're overweight versus the field on your allocation on that player. You're taking a stand. You want to really take a stand? Play half of your lineups with it. You know? If that guy has a big game, your lineups are in a different position versus the field because you're leveraging the field by, by manipulating the perspective uh, percentage owned that you're going to see on the weekend. And it's not tough to do. And do it with really good players. You know, you like AJ Green, you think he's going to get in the box once or twice this week? Why not? If he's going to be whatever percent he's going to be, and I don't want to say a number uh, of what I think he's going to be because I honestly don't know. Uh, but if you think he's going to be X percent owned, why not have two or three X? How often do I play a player as a block play? Not often. In basketball more so than in football. Come visit NASA. Are you saying I'm a space cadet? Marvin Jones, Julie, Ju yeah. Marvin Jones Jr. or Jordy. Try saying that five times fast, chat. Uh, give me MJJ. Aaron Jones or D. Henry in cash? Give me Aaron Jones. Over Henry. 
David Johnson and cash. I think he's cash game viable, but you're sweating the carries. You're sweating touches. As soon as you put him in, you're like, God, I hope they don't give him 16 touches today. Because they could. You know? They could legitimately give him 16 touches. Because they're dumb. Connor versus CMC with price not a concern. Uh, CMC. Like just raw projection? Christian McCaffrey. Connor MG3, CMC, solid core for cash. Yep. You could fit it. It ain't hard. It really isn't difficult. Boyd or Baldwin for cash? I'll take Baldwin over Boyd for cash, please. I'll take the savings. Marvin Jones Jr. and Steph Diggs or Baldwin and Golden Tate. Give me the first one. MJJ and Steph. American hero. Thielen and Juju together in cash viable. I think there's way too much opportunity cost in that. That means that you're not playing two of the top running backs. No fear on Baldwin's health. They didn't have any fear. They ran him out there on all the snaps this week and led the team in targets. I mean, it's the NFL. Every single player is one play away from busting your lineup. C. Smith 80, thank you very much for the two months in a row with Twitch Prime. You don't think it's too long before CMC takes Kamara's spot at the top, especially with Ingram back? Maybe. I think that the, the offenses are different. I think that Alvin Kamara has more touchdown equity, even with Mark Ingram there. Uh, I think that CMC has a similar floor, but not as much touchdown expectation on a week-to-week -week basis. Even with Ingram back. Because late last season, they were still giving Kamara a lot of goal line work, even with... Uh, Ingram there. GG man. Thank you for the two. Vance Connor and Juju, too much Steelers. Nope. We've talked about this before, right? Like somebody clipped it out and put it. I've pinned it in Discord in the Subs NFL channel. Uh, so if you go in there and go look at the pinned posts, if you think that three players are underpriced and they're on the same team in a high scoring environment, why are you just not playing them? It's fine to play them. Bortles or Stafford and DK Cash? Um, no weather, I prefer Bortles. Weather, I prefer Stafford. Mixon or DFJ Cash? I prefer DFJ, but I think I just have a mental block on Mixon. So if, you, if you're if you fine about... I just have a problem, and, and it's, it's not anything I can explain. It has nothing to do with off the field. It really doesn't. And I know that they gave him the ball a bunch, 22 times in each of the first two games that they played this year before the injury. I'm not sold, and I'm going to play him. But I'll take the 300 and play DFJ against San Francisco, who theoretically is a better matchup. Both teams that they're playing against play slowly. These are the two slowest teams in the league. You know, like Arizona's plays super slow and Miami plays super slow. So, like, they might get less plays, but they'll definitely get the touches. Who do I like more, Peter or Adam? Like, I won't tell anyone. It's like, it's like asking me which one of my kids I like more. Of course I like one more, but I'm not going to tell you. When saying uh, weather, how bad, supposed to be some rain and light winds. Like I said, last I read, it was supposed to be a torrential downpour, uh, thunderstorms in Kansas City. I won't know until Sunday morning when they put a camera on the field, right? Like, we were freaking out about rain. Remember, it was like the Philly game in week one. We're freaking out, man. It's like Cleveland and Philly, something like that. Just just going crazy. Oh, man, I want to play all the players. Like, or Pittsburgh and, and whatever, right? It was Pittsburgh and, and, and Cleveland. Oh, God, the rain's going to be horrible in, in Cleveland. Oh, God, we have to fade the game. And then they went to like a preseason uh, pregame shot of uh, on Fantasy Football Now. And like... They had those flags, you know, the ones that are, like, posted on the on the curly thing. Like a little curled flagpole. It's, like, got a, a piece of fabric that hangs down like a triangle. And the thing wasn't spinning, and it wasn't flapping. I'm like, all right, I'm playing players in this game. I won't know till then. I hope Weather Clears can't wait to catch Ty Freak uh, own Jalen. All right. I want clear weather in that game too. 
just because I think it's got a lot of good plays in it. And I think they're going to be under owned because people are going to say, well, you know, Jacksonville's defense is really good. Or, you know, I don't know. Jacksonville's offense isn't that good. And I still think it's going to be a lot of scoring. Weather gods are going to save us from 170 yard Bortles day. They might. Offense has an advantage in rain. Not if they have no footing. Not if they can't hold on to the ball. It also depends on how much rain. You know, like that's... I was going back and forth with the weather guy from 4 for 4 earlier this season about that. He's like, well, you know, over the course of all these rain games, uh, you know, it shows that this these are what the expected points are. And I'm like, yeah, but how many of those games went between... You know, th that includes games that had 0.1 inches of rain. I don't care about those games. That's a light drizzle, but it counts as rain. Show me from two inches of rain to five inches of rain during game time. Now we got some. Now how does that affect things? So like it depends on how much rain they expect. And if it's just light rain, whatever, I'll play the guys. But if it's heavy, heavy rain, thunder showers, and, and sustained thunder showers for the entirety for two and a half of the three hours that that game's going to last, eh. Ah. Do you not drink? If so, can you drive me around LA while I party? I don't drink. Uh, just a personal choice. But no, I cannot be. Uh, they have Uber for that. I will not be your personal Uber driver. Kirk Cousins Cash Game Viable. Yes. Uh, if you ship the Listener League, can you play in the format? That's the rules. That is exactly how you get to play in the format. You win the Listener League. Then the next week, you get to challenge me, Adam, and Pete. Thank you for the 100 bits, S. Boynton. If Allison is out, MVS and Taiwan okay. Yep. Let you get up to all the guys. Yeah. MVS uh, is kind of a key on this slate. And we won't know until inactives. You know, like we can guess, we can think of what he's going to be, but we don't know yet. This is who I'm talking about. Valdez Scantling. He is 3,300. He is going to play a lot of snaps in the case that Cobb is out and Allison is out. He is going to line up on the outside. He is an athletic freak. I do not know if he has the trust of Aaron Rodgers, as Adam put so eloquently on the edge this week. If he is on the field for that amount of time, in a game that they are going to have to throw to win, and Rhodes is going to follow, if he does, I'm going to have to, again, I'm going to have to dig more into that by Sunday morning to find out if Rhodes is going to follow around uh Devonte adams and a hobbled Devonte adams then scantling could get six seven eight targets at 3300 and becomes a massive key on this slate to opening up all the volume running backs and getting one of the stud wide receivers and having a quarterback that you like and a good enough defense and a solid tight end this guy could open everything up you like time on too i don't hate it I think that they don't want to give Ty Montgomery the amount of touches that they were giving him last year because of what it did to him. Like, I don't think he gets more than 10 touches, like, in, in a game, even with all those guys out. Rodgers definitely trusts him more. I, I completely agree with you. It doesn't mean that he won't reach value, but he does eat up a roster spot at running back for you, which is kind of an issue, getting eight touches out of a running back slot. How does one join the listener league? Uh, you listen to the podcast. Uh, you basically go to DK Playbook, find the Edge podcast, and there's a link to join the Listener League there. MG3, CMC, Connor, and Juju with Josh Allen, Cash Game. I can't talk about Josh Allen... Why are you doing this to me? Every time you guys mention Cash Game and Josh Allen, don't do that again. Stop with the Josh Allen. Everyone is jujuing this weekend. Well, it's good juju to play him. No links in chat, guys. It's a big yikes for me, dog. Exactly. Boyd or Ridley and Cash? Uh, Boyd. Don't be that guy. Don't be the don't be the hamster on the wheel. 
I'm going to catch up to all those touchdowns he scored the last few weeks. I'm going to get him. I'm going to catch up to him. I didn't play him then, but I'm going to play him now. Six touchdowns in three weeks. He's going to average two touchdowns a game the rest of the season. I'm going to catch up to him. You're not going to catch up to him. Those touchdowns are gone. Say goodbye to those touchdowns. Njoku, MG3, or Vance CMC for GPP? I think Vance CMC is going to be extremely chalky. So if you want to go with the lower owned, you know, fade the chalk sort of play, you go to Njoku MG3, but Vance CMC definitely has a higher uh, raw total. Jimbo Slice, bro. Jimbo Slice, yo, bro. Thank you for the new Twitch Prime subscription. Show him some love in the chat, guys. Quote the Raven, Joe Flacco for 304 TDs. He does that every once in a while. I can never predict when it happens, but he does it every once in a while. <laughs> I like touchdowns. Can't wait for us to play Jordy just in time to revert. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. It's possible. Funchess in a GPP? Yeah, I'm good with that. I like the touchdown upside that you get. GPP strategy, Juju, Julio, and Diggs, and Kelsey throw darts at running backs. I don't think you need to throw darts. I think there's cheap running backs. I just think that they are they have question marks to them. We went over them earlier in the broadcast, right? From, you know, Johnson, or from dude on Detroit, carry on Johnson, to Yeldon, to, you know, there, there's guys that are down there from four to 6,500, 4,000 to 6,500. There's guys in there. NBA streams this season. I want to do something. I, I'm not going to be able to do it every day, but like, I'll figure out what days I can do like a quick little morning video. I'll either do a video to just upload to YouTube, right? Similar to last year's, like a little 10 minute. Here's two studs and three values uh, and let's roll. So look out for those. I've got a friend of mine who worked in the NBA doing some NBA preseason videos that we're going to put up on the YouTube channel as well. Jordy and Taylor uh, in cash for, oh, Jordy or Taylor for cash and TK. I prefer Taiwan Taylor to Jordy. I know that I slammed Jordy in the first look lineup at the beginning of the week. I prefer, at a longer look, I prefer Taylor. If that's your last spot. And then upgrade something. Uh, Ertz, Mixon, and Gordon. Okay. Or McDonald, Gurley, Gordon. The first one for GPP, definitely. I love that first one for a GPP. You have massive upside. Mixon has two touchdown upside. Gordon has multiple touchdown upside. Ertz has 10 plus target upside for a tight end and touchdown upside for a tight end. Like that's a that's a very, very solid GPP lineup. And Ertz is not going to be highly owned on this slate. Why with three receivers? What? Why with three receivers banged out? Would you not run the ball Green Bay with Aaron Jones? Because you still have Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball. There's There's one major differentiator there. Like, a guy who may be the best quarterback of all time. At worst, he's top five. At worst, ever. What's the most amount of salary I leave behind? In cash? Like, maybe 300 You know, on a rare occasion with a really short... It depends on slate size, right? The more plays there are, the less gaps there are in salary. The less gaps there are, the more chances there are for you to find a guy that you need to play that might be better if you have three, four, five hundred left uh, at some position, right? Uh, on a shorter slate or on showdown, I'm more willing to leave more. And in GPP, I'll leave as much as 800. ASJ cash game worthy? Not for me. Are there other tight ends I like besides Vance for cash? I like Kelsey, if you could fit him. I mean, again, weather permitting, but I do like Kelsey. I think Njoku and his seven targets are fine. Uh, I'm coming around on Jimmy Graham again. 4,700 didn't go up enough, and if all the wide receivers are out, he's going to see some targets. Jared Cook in cash? I prefer Graham to Cook. How much money do I have? A lot. Ertz, Kelsey together, uh, viable in GPP. Sure. I think you'll be one of like seven people who have that though. In total of like the 500,000 or whatever that are in the Millie Maker. How many are in the Millie Maker this week? 235,000 lineups would be like 12 of those lineups. So like 
You'll be differentiating when you do that. Looking out for uh, my office window here in KC, bright sunshine. Yeah, but it's not game time on Sunday yet. Weather can change in two days. Christian Kirk at 3.7K uh, is viable. I think he's viable, but I don't think he's cash game viable. I think I, like I had a tournament sprinkle of him last week. I think he's going to catch a long touchdown at some point during this year, a 40 yard touchdown or something. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be. You know, I can't just say this is the week that it's going to happen. We're like last week with Shep. We're like, it's definitely Shep week, right? Like this is the week you have to play Shepard. This is the time you get him in. Could he do something? Yes. Is it likely? Eh. How much money do I have in my wallet right now? I think $240. Al doesn't like to talk about Rosen. I, what do you want to know about Rosen? Ask me a question about Rosen and I'll talk about Rosen. Like I'm not hiding Rosen. There's Rosen. What do you want to talk about, guys? Thoughts on tipping when I pick up carryout? I give 10% on carryout. Favorite chocolate milk brand, Bro Gears. B R O G U I E R E S or something like that. It's, it comes in a in a glass bottle. It's the high dollar stuff. There's there's Josh Rosen. What do y'all want to talk about? Yeah, I don't want to talk about Josh Allen. <laughs> How's FIFA going? Uh, I've played. I won, I lost two, then I won three, then I lost two, then I won two, and then I came to do this podcast. They're matching you up. I know that nobody cares, but they're matching you up now based on your form. So if you lose two in a row, you play somebody else who lost two in a row. So like once I lose two in a row, I start playing bad players. And then I rattle off three wins in a row. And then I start playing guys that have won three wins in a row. And then I'm latched up against like a pro. Like the guy was just completely outclassed me. I was like, well, now I'm out. Do I think Josh Rosen is cute? I have no idea. How much on delivery? Uh, does it go up with bad conditions? I live in LA. There are no bad conditions. That's not a humble brag. That is just a fact of living in Los Angeles. I tip minimum of 20% when I eat in a restaurant, sometimes 25. Started Uber Eats. Great part-time gig. There you go. I'm a Postmates guy myself. Do I have a Postmates command in the chat? I think I do. Bam! There it is. You sign up through that link for Postmates. You download the app. You use that promo code K3F7. And you get $100 in free deliveries when you make that first delivery. I also get $100 in free delivery. So help me help you. And you help me all at the same time. We can help each other get food for free. Earthquakes are bad condition. I don't remember the last time we had an earthquake. <laughs> I appreciate the Steve Nash-esque uh, alley-oop there on the, on the Postmates promo. See? It's right there. Did you pay $300 a seat to watch Hoovy live? Yes. You live on the... There's no more football? Nobody wants to talk about football anymore. Lamar Jackson breaks the slate this week. Man, I want him to start so bad. Baldwin or Marvin? Uh, again, I'm fine with both. I think both are cash game viable. I think you can play both together in cash. Uh, if I had to play one, it would be Marvin. Wentz versus Stafford GPP. Give me Stafford. <laughs> I do know what snow is. I choose to not live in it. I went to Syracuse University. I have a, you know, my wife's family's from Chicago. I go there often. Nope. Don't want snow. Don't like snow. Tywan Taylor and James Conner versus Tyler Boyd and TJ Yeldon. I definitely prefer the first one. Definitely prefer the first one. And I could be wrong, but I'm going to be on that first one. I will have guy. I will have the second one in tournaments. Nowhere near my cash games, though. Uh, what is considered value for a wider series? Fan? I mean, typically speaking, 2x salary. The guy is 5k there. You want 10 points. You're like 120 points wins you money on a, on most weeks. Thielen versus Connor for flex. Give me Connor. I'll take the guy that's, you know, should see 20 plus touches. We shoot for 150 points in cash on DK. I do. 
but like scoring's been out of control this year. So like I still shoot for that, but I've ended up higher on three of the four weeks. DFJ and Connor uh, in cash scares you, but are closing an eyes and clicking it. I mean, Connor doesn't scare me. DFJ scares me a little more than Connor. I think Connor's safe with the amount of targets that he should get against Arizona and the scoring environment and at home. Favored running backs at home and with totals over 50. Like, do a search for that, right, on whatever site you use for, for data. Search for historical performance of running backs who play at home and are on the favored team in game situations where the total is over 50 and see what comes back. Not a problem, uh, M. Simon. MVS and Taylor too scary in cash. Uh, I'm scared to say that it might not be scary for me in cash. Who's DFJ? David freaking Johnson. David freaking Johnson. That's who DFJ is. Thank you for the 100 bits, Kelly Mack. Appreciate you. How's that for data? You know what? How's that for data? How's that for a good show? I think you guys have hammered out all the questions. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys tuning in once again on YouTube. If you would be so kind, please click like. Subscribe button's right there. There's another video right there. And I'll catch up to you on Sunday morning on the Anti-Tinkercast on twitch.tv slash Al underscore Smizzle. Bye.